Hey everybody, it's the Mad Master here. I'm going to be doing a video today, and it's going to be about a controversial subject. Oh, whoop de doo uh, I seem to do, do a lot of uh, videos about controversial subjects, but this one is about the concept of beta shaming. And I was watching Playing With Fire and watching a lot of the Manosphere stuff again because I'm on a uh, mission to improve myself. I'll just say that. <laughs> Regardless of how controversial it is, but um, where that ends up, I don't know. You know, we'll see. I'm not, not saying I'm going to go all player on people or something. I'm not. I'm not really. I'm just seeing where things lead in my life. So, and I'm gonna stop hitting this damn couch over and over again. <laughs> my video is hot. I'm mad. <laughs> so, anyways, this one is about beta shaming, and I really realized watching this video that. I think this is a common occurrence, like more common than people think. And I'm not going to go into like psychology in this video that in depth about what I think, how I think this works and what it, you know, what it entails as far as like what's behind all of this. But I think that there is a definite case to be made that this is a real phenomenon, even if it might be mislabeled or mis, you know, misnamed. So essentially the concept is that a guy who is less, well, let's say just maybe they're less attractive or they may not be less attractive than your average guy. You know, the salt five is not wheat waffles. I'm just making fun of that guy again, but I like making fun of that shit. Um, maybe they're salt five or maybe they're a normie, you know. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'm not saying that they're, they are necessarily. Essentially, they lack confidence. Um, they don't seem congruent with their actions and their words. Um, okay, so let's say they're just, you know, for all intents and purposes, let's pretend for, you know, assumed positions, as they call it in NLP, that beta and alpha are real things, you know, in, in humans, I should say. I know I'm going to hear... I've heard it all before. The wolf study. Uh, actually, I have a video I'm doing about regards to that. The wolf study that was debunked about alpha males. Uh, yeah, look at Charles. Oh, yeah, let's go back and just like destroy all Charles Darwin and, and Richard Dawkins and all these other people. Matt Ridley, all these pe scientists. Let's just throw them all in the trash because it, it, it just one wolf study that sjw woke people fucking brain up about alpha, alpha males not existing and all this stuff and i think it's way more complicated than people say of course like, than the pickup artists and the red pill people say but i'm just saying so essentially what beta shaming is is like there was a pickup artist you know i'm not gonna i'm not gonna say who it is because i'm sick of talking about him i'm sick of giving him attention over the years it's some parodies I've done of him on of him on an old channel. I did a parody of Owen Cook. I'll just say the word. He did this video which he took down because they're whatever the hell is going on with that company. It's very very bizarre. Um, where he does, and I don't know, you know, how much is staged or how much isn't. I don't. I can't. This, you know, I can't say at this point what is staged and what is not with some of those videos and stuff. Essentially, he had one of his uh, boot camp boot camp uh, attendees try some of the same lines, try some of the same moves, and get totally blown off and, like, shamed for what he was doing. And Owen proceeded to do these same things and was not shamed. And knowing how Owen Cook looks at this point, it's not the looks. <laughs> It's definitely something else. I'm just saying. I'm not trying to be a dick, but you know he's he, you know, uh, he's looking a little rough nowadays. I'll just say that. At least to me, you know, as far as my tastes, if I were you know into that sort of thing, which I'm not. But um, it doesn't really matter. But I know what looks good and what looks bad to some extent. You know, uh, to some extent. You know, to some extent. But you know, it's like. Uh, you think about these things and like, and I, I've thought about times in my own life where, you know, friends, you know, friends, relatives, peers have put me down in certain ways when I talk about doing something or something and women do this a lot. And this is kind of a, this is kind of the whole point. It's like, oh, well, one guy 
could come off and be what other people it's like all these old movies from the 80s right these romantic comedies and stuff they go out the door you know the or not the door the window the second floor window you know they're they're down you know in the yard with their boom box playing peter gabriel you know at full blast i love you you know and another guy will do that and you know get the police called on him you know and it's it's one of those things that like it's so hilarious to think about like this perspective that this contradiction i have i had someone that i knew that had a short-term relationship with someone else i knew and the woman in the situation i'm just gonna say i'm not gonna say who it is because it's kind of fucked up um that i'm talking about these people but anyways you could use your imagination i mean you know um as a total hypocrite about this stuff like you know when i talk about having casual oh, i was just casual with them and i talk about it i'm a sexist pig or whatever you know or you know it's like one of those things like when people when you do something yourself and you say it's something and then you criticize or shame other people because they don't view because certain people don't view me as a successful person or you know people don't view me as a successful in that area of life they don't success they don't view me as as this thing that they don't and it, the image of it and this is i'm talking about my own being beta shamed is they they can't envision it because it's like this cognitive dissonance it's like what he would could, could be that kind of guy oh i don't think so you know so what happens is when the beta or the, you know the the afc if there was an old school pickup artist term seduction community quote unquote term you know average frustrated term the afc the beta the chode as our rsd used to call it um when they assume this position of this like player alpha guy they want to sh you know the person that's like thread they're threatened by this because they have this image of the guy as this other this beta guy that's just going to like be passive or be you know less successful in that area and like it's just too late for them they maybe they grew up with them you know <laughs> maybe they you know know them from some other area or some way you know so they want to they want to cut it, to, they, it it threatens them in some way so by default they will they will hammer they will slap it down you know they will slap it down and in real life that manifests in other ways too of course like so like i mean for people that don't you know don't know me or you know it's like people can't ima people imagine you as you've been before so when you're trying to improve certain parts of your life just saying they can't see this image that's different because they it's just totally uh and it's anti-ethical to what they've seen before so it threatens them it's like this new thing like Oh, Matt being like great with the ladies. Oh, what? what? Uh, you know, not that it'd been like abysmal with the ladies, but you know, mediocre at best, you know, <laughs> when I really try, you know, <laughs> but the mediocrity for some people like virgins at this age or something, it would be like a miracle, of course, but enough about that. So I think there's a lot of like a lot of different kinds of intricate philosophical approaches we can make to this concept but i think it's true by far i believe in this this beta shaming idea and i'm not supportive of it i'm just saying i'm trying to describe it even more because it's something to explore because it's something to explore really really well because i'll just say this like let's say a female relative for example will Okay, some of them will say, like, okay, Michael Douglas or, you know, Russell Brand or whoever, you know, whatever womanizer celebrity they like or they want to fuck or whatever, I'm just saying. You know, let's say, oh, well, some of them will say they're pigs or scumbags or whatever, but they like them or whatever. Some of them, sometimes they'll just excuse all the behavior. So if you talk about... But this is where the beta shaming comes in. If you talk about being like that, then there's like, oh no, you're a sexist pig. You're you're a 
you're a mo you're a monster, you know, misogynist. You know, if you're if you go around like Russell Brand did back in the day, or, oh, even you know, or whoever, Michael Douglas or uh, Rick Rocket, I don't know, you know, anybody, just like fucking, you know, name a celebrity, like. Or even if some of your music might be, you know, tailored around that too. But it's like, you know, I had a conversation with this girl growing up and it's like, she kind of laid it down the line. I, I'm not going to say what happened to this girl. It was, I was hanging out with her. It was kind of getting, I was, I was being beta. I'll just say that. <laughs> but, um, she put it about this guy that was hitting on her and it was, it was probably more honest because she said well he's not suave you know so what what does that mean like i think what that means is that you're not subtle about it you're not using the codes that you're supposed to use you know when you're trying to seduce someone or trying to get you know talk to them in that way and that's what was going on and that's kind of like the but what beta shaming would be is a guy's awkwardly using those codes and trying, and then they see the resistance inside the person and be like, oh my God, you're trying so hard, be yourself, blah, blah, blah. This is what they're talking about. This is exactly what they're talking about. So this beta shaming thing is totally aligned with that concept. And I think that that's what like uh, playing with fire <laughs> was, was talking about in this video. It's like you, want to be or if you want to change yourself in your life you're going to have to be uncomfortable and awkward until you fit into those shoes into those into that new personality or image that you're trying to be but it threatens other people for sure or even talking about it threatens other people my i have a big mouth so i mean i don't really have a big mouth it's kind of small but yeah, but like my actual mouth is small, but you know, I've, I'm, you know, I like to, I like to talk a lot about, you know, what I'm doing or whatever, obviously. So when someone hears what I want to do or what I say, of course, it's going to threaten them because I talk about it in such a boisterous way, but it's like, uh, yeah, it just, it threatens them. It threatens their, their reality. So another, and another thing about this is like when you're, it's very hard to change your identity. I believe it can be done to some extent. I do believe there is a self, but I also believe you can sort of, it's more malleable than you think, than a lot of people think. It's ironic because the people to talk about being yourself and there you have a self are the most, like the more, most of the woke people are probably into like bashing, like, like, uh, pickup artist stuff and like oh, be yourself you know they're probably the even though they're like uh they don't believe in you know they believe in all this social constructionist shit you know and like everything's socially constructed and there's no true this or that you know kind of ironic but it's true but yeah that's that's probably kind of a a little bit what i think about beta shaming i'm, I'm trying to think of more examples because i think uh i think it's pretty uh obvious that that's what's happening in these situations and you know, I'll take it. Oh, this is another example that's really funny. So me and my friend years ago were trying to hit on girls after bar time, which is, I, I know it's controversial, but I'm just being honest. And he was like saying, uh, Simon says, take me home. And they were like, oh, my, ah, you know, they were responding like that. I said, so, and I tried it myself and they thought I wanted a ride home, like literally a ride. Like... I just was so uh, uncalibrated in that in that situation. I was probably really tired too, so maybe I, my sexual state, as as some call it, was not prime at that point. So, but it's pretty hilarious. And I guess that, that was more like I'm not going to say it's beta shaming, but it's an example of like someone seeing something else than what for what it wasn't. I don't know. But yeah, beta shaming, that's what happens half the time. That's what that's what people fear the whole seduction thing. It's like they view men that are beta in a societal sense as irredeemable. They're nice guys. Okay, they'll meet they'll meet someone one day. Okay. They'll meet someone by chance one day. 
God forbid, I mean, of course, like online is accepted by these people. So like you'll meet someone online one day. Um, God forbid you meet someone by trying to meet them because in their world, it's all about chance and, and this, this magical, this magical fate that you have with meeting someone, you know, that's what it's supposed to be. Right. And maybe it's someone at work, you know, it's the, and you have 2.5 kids eventually and, you know, get married and you're in love and you get a divorce, you have a midlife crisis, you know, and just, that's what happens. That's what happens. That's what these people say when they say these things, eventually you'll meet someone, you know, and, um, you know, and, you know, that's fine if they believe that it's fine if they want to believe in that kind of react, that person, that that's their projection upon the world. They believe there's just these chance. You can't force it to happen. You can't. You can't just like. You can't go out there and uh, interact consciously. You can't come up with things to to do or say. You have to just be yourself in this nebulous fucking you know miasma of of bullshit that really for a lot of people does not work. Um, Especially for people that have high standards, <laughs> maybe too high standards, <laughs> you know, I mean, it's a, uh, it's this weird thing that people do and, and it's just, it's really annoying and really uh, irritating to, to hear these things. But I, I know that people think this, I know that people don't believe in trying to uh, get to a goal, you know, trying to do things unnaturally in a social, social manner, you know, they think, oh, well, you know, just, just be yourself who can, you know, you, you can be quiet and you can be the same self as you are. So it's like the ultimate beta shaming is like, to me, it's like, oh, well, it's, it's this, it's this uh, conflict between their view of you as the beta passive guy and your vision of yourself as the arisen alpha that's, you know, very, uh, whether or not you're promiscuous or not, but very, you know, attractive to a lot of, uh, a lot of women or whatever, you know, and that's kind of the, the dichotomy between those two things. So that's the ultimate beta shame. Like it's, it's like their, their vision of the world, and, you know, this, these might, these, some of these ideas might sound misogynist, but it's just the truth. It's, it's just how people, how people talk. They don't believe that you should take initiative with regards to improving your love life, like in a very like organized fashion. That's something that they're very opposed to you doing. That you'll get kicked out of a mall. You'll, I'm talking about one person told me that, but you know, you'll, you'll do this. You'll have this happen to you. It's not good. It's sexist. It's a, uh, it's uh, objectifying. It's this or that, you know? And that's something that I clearly don't not give a fuck about anymore, but you know, I think it's it's very obvious that looking at these situations that the alpha guy if there if there is one that exists I'm just just assuming the position that they do exist to you know, in some form of reality they do I think that they do the alpha guy that they like didn't I mean they they are exhibiting the same behaviors that you're modeling but for some reason, you're the bad guy. You're the evil guy. You know, they like, they want to bang this fucking alpha male that you're trying to be. But when you try to be him, you're problematic. You're, you're evil. You know, I wouldn't say evil, but you know, <laughs> I wouldn't go that far, but you're bad. You know, you're a bad man, you know, and, uh, that's, it's really unfortunate people believe this, but it's not, it's, I don't think it's their fault. I think this is, just part of our psychology and neurology and, and genet maybe even genetics, maybe, dare I say that, you know? And that's what a lot of, you know, when women talk about, when they bash guys that get into like, you know, pick up artists or like, you know, or uh, dating tool tools for dating like that, you know, books like that, you know, about how to pick up women or whatever. They're really thinking of you as this guy that's just gonna naturally meet someone and when you're ready, when you're ready, you know, 
<laughs> they, <laughs> it's such a joke at this point. Because when I was first told that, I was in middle school. Or I, I, maybe I was late elementary school. I was told that nothing happened. So years <laughs> happened between, oh, you eventually you'll meet someone. You know, it's like, and what? And one? Why not? Why not ten, twenty, thirty? You know, I'm just, I'm just, one. You know, the one. You'll meet the one. That's another fable too. You know, the one. Of course, I think time tested the ones. I think that that does exist, but I don't think the one exists in any other fashion. So I don't. I don't think. I think it's bullshit. But yeah, I really hate these responses to these ideas that people have, and that's kind of beta shaming. You know. It's like, and I think they, they think, and a lot of it is, you know, how you view yourself and how you project yourself to the world. Like for my, my thing is like, part of me is very beta, you know, very passive, you know, very, uh, reserved. So they, they see these things as like, oh, that's crazy to think of them that way. And they probably just don't want you to talk about fucking girls and stuff, too, if you're, they're your relative, especially, you know, it's like, oh, you don't want to hear about my, you know, relative talking about having sex with a bunch of people or something. It's kind of gross, you know. <laughs> I mean, obviously it's gross, but I'm just saying, like, you know, this is kind of the thing that happens. Like, female friends will tell a guy, oh, yeah, well, you'll meet someone eventually, and, you know, you're a nice guy. You know, it's part of that's like what Wheat Waffles talks about is true it's partially true a lot of these most of these things are partially true but just the framing of it and how it you know resolves itself is bullshit but yeah so it's a it's a real thing i think beta shaming is uh is a real thing and having a conscious awareness of it is a good too because you know this is what they're doing i'm not saying it's conspiracy or anything like that this is their their mindset they're 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 shaming that side of you that you want to get rid of because they see it as they see it as something that is not naturally habituated into their their consciousness as far as how you've been in the past. So they're projecting who you were forward. It's like I say I'm gonna be famous and rich and have a castle and a harem of redheads. People don't believe me. Why not? Well, because I'm not living in a even a you know, in even a like a expensive condo yet. You know? Of course they're not gonna believe me. You know, of course not. But, you know, I mean, <laughs> so that's part of it, too. It's like you make these plans and, you know, you don't follow through or whatever. Or you're not doing that. But, yeah, it's, uh, but I think beta shaming happens because they, they, at, on some level, they want you to remain the same, too. You know, they want you to remain this person because they're threatened by that guy. They're threatened that a lot of people are threatened by a guy that they, they don't know what happens next from him. It's unpredictable, you know. He's and that's a lot of what alpha is about. Is is like spontaneity. So when you've never been a very spontaneous person, when you just work the normal job you have as a chode, you know, drive the boring fucking car that you've always uh, driven. You know, you've always done the same old thing. You're very stable, whatever. You know, in your mediocrity, of course, you're going to be threatened by some big kind of abrupt possible change that you're going to make so and i'm not i'm not mad you know i'm not mad about being you know beta shamed for anything or you know when when women see the in you know the the sort of uh awkwardness of like i said i said this pickup line like last week like and i stuttered i was like so embarrassed and it was just something my friend made up, but I was just like, I feel for like 20 minutes, I was like, oh my God, that's so cringe. But you know, and, and they're, they're gonna see that awkwardness, you know, and they're gonna think it's kind of uh, uh, incongruous to who you are because they're gonna see that awkwardness. And that's a lot of what the beta shaming is really about because you, they see you do something you haven't done before, obviously, or haven't done much, and they don't see it as like part of you because you are assuming a different kind of role in life or in your in this scenario so that's what makes it really hard to change because you're already habituated to be a certain way and being that kind of guy the best thing you can do is just find that part of yourself that has been most similar to that guy 
and then adopt that and grow from there. That's the way to do it for real. Like that's how I do it is because like, okay, well I've had situations where I have been flirtatious and I have been pretty good, pretty witty and stuff. So I'm just gonna like draw upon that to get better with this stuff. That's how you do it. And you have to be that way. You have to feel comfortable, you know? So yeah, that's 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 what I think about beta shaming, you know, 25 minute video about it. But I think it is a real, or so far, I might even do five more minutes, but you know, so far it's like, I mean, it's just like this thing that people do and I hate it all. I hate it all. I hate when they, you know, I hate when people think that, you know, you can't be a different kind of person that you've been, you know, when they make assumptions, what the worst thing is assumptions about you, like that you're, what you're going to do in the future based on the past. Like, oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. You know, you know and it, it pisses me off, you know, but anyways, that's about all.